One of the first jobs MEPs face after the summer break is civilian drones. They're becoming increasingly popular, increasingly cheap, accessible and useful, and for some increasingly a noise nuisance and invader of privacy. MEPs on the Transport Committee are due to vote on drones in September, when the preparation of legislation on key safety, security and privacy issues are finalised. Jacqueline Foster is leading the process. Jacqueline Foster, many thanks indeed for joining us. We're talking uh, today about the report that you are leading in the Parliament on the safe use of remotely piloted aircraft systems in common parlance drones like that one there. Here we go, a demonstration. I'm sure you've seen this many times before. What is behind the definition of the future of drone technology as a transformative technology? Is we have to look at where we've come from. And if we look at over 100 years ago with um, Berlioz or with the Wright brothers, um, you know, that was the start of the civil aviation uh, industry, basically. What we have seen over the last 15 years in terms of from a commercial point of view is a huge growth in this industry. We're looking at drones being used, civil drones being used to, to check crops in fields, vast fields of crops. We're looking at them to look at um, humanitarian disasters. There may be forest fires. Uh, they check railway lines. So there are a huge, the film industry, uh, the growth really over the last 10 to 15 years has now actually become absolutely huge. So we need to now take a look at how we can manage this in a most sensible way. Uh, non-prescriptive way. Okay, that leads us very neatly into our first question, and let me uh, put this one My to you here. My proposal to you, Jacqueline, is to get a unified EU drone license, which enables drone pilots all over the EU to fly in all of Europe, as long as they stick to the rules set by JARUS and the EASA. Right now, there's different rules for every country, and you have to apply for every country you go to for different locations. So my question is, when will we see a unified drone EU license for all the drone pilots in the EU? Clearly, there are different types of drones. But as a general rule, if you are operating a drone and you're a farmer in a field and you are operating a drone in a football stadium, I think there's two very different requirements because there'll be no people in the field. So if your little drone happens to hit a little bale of wheat, it's probably not going to cause a problem. But the same size one in a football stadium could. It could cause damage. So therefore, we want to make sure there's appropriate flying schools where people can be licensed properly. And we also want to make sure that whenever they're used, that the appropriate level of training is in for the operator. You mentioned safety issue. Here's a question from somebody representing pilots on that very thing. OK, we understand the importance of drones and the benefits they bring to society but safety must always come first. We're very impressed by the way in which many in the, in the industry have introduced geofencing in order to reduce the threat to passenger airliners. However, we're still concerned about the threat to helicopters and especially air ambulance helicopters who operate in remote areas where geofencing does not exist. What can you do to reduce that threat? I'm writing a framework of ideas of how we think this can be progressed and then the regulators will have a look at it. There will be geofencing, for example, this is where certain technology can be blocked out around airports and obvious, probably, um, power stations. There will be all sorts of things like that that is available. And I think it's then having a look at how we then uh, deal with some of the issues where perhaps geo geofencing is not... Uh, not appropriate. I guess if drone technology takes off in the next 15 years in the way it has done in the past 15 years, that you, might, you could easily imagine a scenario where there's thousands, literally, of drones, perhaps this size, perhaps even bigger than this, scooting around, which are outside of the geofencing capabilities. What, 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 what is your solution for that? Well, there is already that possibility. Yeah. And we deal and with it. it be regulated if you and, look, and controlled? Well, well, it already is. If you're looking at particularly the small ones coming under about 400 or 500 feet, um, if you look at, for example, the Civil Aviation Authority, there is already criteria in, in, in orders, aircraft orders, that is laid down and the rules are quite precise. And many other member states, well, certainly when you're looking at those that fly up to four or 500 feet, They've already got, uh, they've already got uh, like a regulation in place there to say this is how this should be dealt with. I am confident, I am confident 
that we'll now find a way to how we move forward with the increase actually in the usage. Okay, we've time for one more question and let's go to this one in German. Drohnen bedeuten eine völlig neue Herausforderung für vorhandene Sicherheitssysteme. Drohnen fliegen zum Beispiel einfach über Zäune hinweg und transportieren dabei Waffen, Drogen oder andere Schadstoffe. Welche Reaktionen wir machen können, hängt vor allen Dingen von den rechtlichen Rahmenbedingungen ab, die bisher noch nicht definiert sind. Müssen wir passiv reagieren, also wie gesagt nur die Sicht versperren, oder dürfen wir auch diese Drohne stören und sie gegebenenfalls zum Absturz bringen? If somebody was in their garden and they're there having some bathing and having a picnic one day and a drone comes over, that has no right to come over. Uh, nobody has a right to invade somebody's privacy. And that's quite clear. And we have national legislation already in place, as well as EU-wide legislation in terms of protection and in terms of privacy rules. So I don't see the need to have additional rules. Uh, what we need to make sure is that it is properly enforced and all the member states have laws in place that can enforce this. So I hope nobody's thinking about doing anything ridiculous, um, but if certainly somebody finds they are in a position, any, any person, uh, where there is some nuisance factor here, then they pick up the telephone and they phone their, their police officer. Okay, Jacqueline Foster, thank you very much indeed, appreciate thank it. Thank you.